Hello friends, this is Laravel chat application tutorial series. And in this part, we will learn, how to store connection id in user table. When user has been connect with WebSocket application, and remove connection id. From user table, when user has been disconnect, from WebSocket application. Here connection id has been generated, by WebSocket library, when user has been connected. And based on this connection id, WebSocket library, has been send message. So now, we want to store, this connection id, in user table. And here, we will also store, dynamic token value, in user table. And here, token will be generated, when user has been, login into system. And based on this token value, we will get user details, this is because. In socket controller, auth class will not be work, for get user table column details. So based on this token value, we will page user table column details. Now first we want to generate token, and store in user table, when user has been login into system. So for this, we have goes to sample controller class file, and here goes to, validate login method. And here, we have to write, dollar token variable value is equal to md5php function, and under this function, we have to write php unique it function, so this code will generate, dynamic token, which we have stored, under dollar token variable. Now we want to update, this token value under this, user table, so here, we have to write user class, with where method, with two argument, so here in first argument. We have to write, it table column name, and in second argument, we have to write auth class, with it method, which will return, login user it. After this, we have to write, update method, and under this method. We have to write, token table column, and in value, we have to write, dollar token variable. So this code will update, token value under, user table token table column. So when user has been login, then new token value will be update, in login user. Now here in the browser, we can see login page, in the browser. Now we have to enter, user email and password details, one by one. And after this, we have click on the login button, so after click, on the login button. Here user has been redirect to dashboard page, which we can see here. Here user has been redirect to dashboard page, which we can see here. We can see that, token table column has been filled, with value. So this token value will be changed, every time, when user has been login into system. Now we want to store, connection id in user table, connection id table column. So here in text editor, we have to open dashboard.blad.php file. And here, we want to pass, token value, to websocket controller class. Forget user table column details, in websocket controller. So for this, here in new websocket object, we have to write question mark token variable is equal to laravel expression and between this we have to write auth method with user method with token table column name so it will return user token details which will be passed to websocket when it will connect to websocket library now we have goes to socket controller class and here under this file we have goes to on open method this is because, when new connection has been established. Then this function has been called, so under this function, we want to get connection id. And store, that connection id, in newly established connected user, in MySQL database. So here, we have to write, query string variable is equal to. $connect variable, with HTTP request, with get URI method. This method will get the fill request URI, from the established connection object. Then after, we have to write, get query method, and this method will convert, URI into string. So this code will return, newly established connection, URI in string format. 
which we have stored under this dollar query string variable. Now, we want to convert string into an array, so here we have to write pass string function with two argument. In first argument, we have to write dollar query string variable. And in second argument, we have to write dollar query array variable. So this function will convert string URI into an array and store under this dollar query array variable. Now here, we have to write if statement and under condition, we have to write php is set function and under condition, we have to write dollar query array variable with token index. So if this condition true, then it will execute if block of code. And under this block, we have to write user class with where method with two argument. In first argument, we have to write table column name token and then in second argument. We have to write dollar query array variable with token index. After this, we have to write update method and under this method, we have to define data in an array format. So in key, we have to write connection id and in value. We have to write dollar connect variable with resource id which will return connection id. So this code will update connection id value in user table connection id table column. Same way, when user has been disconnect from WebSocket, then we have to remove connection it from user table connection it table column. So for this, we have goes to on close method, so this method will be called when connection has been closed. So on this event, we want to remove connection it from user table connection it table column. And under this method, here, we have to write query string variable is equal to dollar connect variable with http request with get uri method this method will get the fill request uri from the established connection object then after we have write get query method and this method will convert uri into string so this code will return newly established connection uri in string format which we have stored under this dollar query string variable now, we want to convert string into array, so here we have write pass string function with two argument. In first argument, we have to write dollar query string variable. And in second argument, we have to write dollar query array variable. So this function will convert string URI into an array and store under this dollar query array variable. Now here, we have to write if statement and under condition, we have to write php is set function and under condition we have to write dollar query array variable with token index so if this condition true then it will execute if block of code and under this block we have to write user class with where method with two argument in first argument we have to write table column name token and then in second argument we have to write dollar query array variable with token index After this, we have to write update method and under this method, we have to define data in an array format. So in key, we have to write connection id and in value. We have to write zero, so this code will update connection id value to zero. In user table connection id table column, so this way connection id has been removed from user table. So here our code is ready, now we have goes to command prompt. And here, first we have to stop this process and again start WebSocket server by run this command. Now in the browser, we have to refresh web page and after refresh of web page. First we have goes to inspect element area and goes into console tab. So here, we can see that connection established message has been displayed. That mean, user has been connect with WebSocket application. Now in the user table, here in login user row, we can see that. Connection id table column has been filled with WebSocket connection number, which we can see here. Now here, have goes to profile page, so when we have goes to profile page. Then this user has been disconnect from WebSocket, and at that time, connection id must be set to zero. 
So here in user table, first we have to refresh user table data. And here in login user row, we can see that connection id value has been set to zero. That means user has been disconnect from WebSocket, so this way. When user has been connect with WebSocket, then connection id update in user table. And when user has been disconnect from WebSocket, then connection id set to zero. So this way, we can manage connection id. In next part, we will learn how to display registered user. Under this chat application dashboard, so we will be meet in next part.